I'm Paul Bennett, deer in Millbridge, Maine, right on the Bull Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. What I'm talking about on this video is an initial concept drawing that I did. If you recall about my sailboat, first of all I talked about my thoughts of developing my own boat after I had looked at some uh, older vessels that were being offered for free and deciding that I was going to design my own sailboat. And being a retired naval architect and marine engineer, it's not really all that difficult. I have the means to do it and experience as a wooden boat builder. So I decided to go in that direction. Well, for short periods it would be liveaboard, so it has to have enough room to be comfortable. It's going to be mostly coastal, but it has to be blue water capable for short jaunts. I'm not going to cross any oceans, not the North Atlantic or the Pacific. I don't have anything to prove. I have no need to do major crossings. But if I did want to go across to the Bahamas or I did want to cross over to Nova Scotia from where I am in Maine, that's still open water and you still have to have a decent boat that's capable of handling it, no matter what situation that, that comes up. Those are the considerations. So I'm going to show you a drawing. The drawing I came up with is just an initial concept sketch. It means nothing at this point, but you have to have something to look at. And then once you have something to look at down on paper, then you can start playing with it and you can massage it. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm at that point. You'll notice that the shear line is relatively flat. It doesn't have a lot of curvature to it. A little bit tall there, a little bit more freeboard than you would normally see on a vessel like this. And I was thinking about liveaboard space. I'm going to change that because I want it to look good. I want a little bit more curvature to the shear line. I want a little bit lower, a little less freeboard because if you have too much and the hull is too tall above the water line, that presents a lot of windage. You have a lot of wind force that goes against the hull in rough seas. That water produces a lot of pressure, those waves slamming up against the side of the hull. That can cause problems too. So. In that regard, I am going to change that. That won't stay. There are a few other things that I'm not terribly happy with. I started thinking about it. Just put a few lines down. You'll notice that it's a 26 foot length on deck vessel. So why 26 feet when earlier I talked about maybe uh, between 20 and 22 feet would, might, be, might be okay for me uh, as a single hander because my wife's a landlubber and I'll be sailing by myself. She'd only join me in port. 26 feet because that's the minimum length here in the United States where you can document your vessel as a U.S. flag vessel. Under that, it would have to be a state registration. And that was the initial idea because there are a lot of advantages to documenting your vessel. Well, now that I have it down on paper and I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, do I really need a 26 footer? Do I want to build that much boat? And one of the things that has me considering this is the fact that I was looking around for uh, scrap lead the other day, visiting a few places, and there was one tire place that's near me that's been around for years and they used to have buckets and buckets of scrap lead weights that I could melt down to use for the outside ballast keel. But the problem is, is that it came under new ownership and the owners got rid of all that stuff. They wanted to clean the place up. They got rid of everything that was laying around. Now, all the wheel weights are steel. They don't, they don't use lead anymore. So, <laughs> they said they'd put aside whatever lead they can find. The older tires that come in, that they take the weights off, they'd hold on to it, but they don't have that big a collection. For a boat this size, it would be quite a bit of lead. One cubic foot of lead weighs around 740, 750 pounds. Probably need around three to four cubic feet, somewhere in that vicinity. And that's a lot of wheel weights. And I also looked at a few other places in scrap yards and there's not a lot of lead to be found. I could go with the solid steel outside ballast keel, but now, I'm looking at a lot more 
out-of-pocket expenses because I'm going to have to buy the steel plate. There's a lot of scrap steel around, but it's in small bits and pieces, so you'd have to suspend those in, say, concrete, like uh, George Bueller does with a lot of his designs. Some other designers do. It's not pretty, but it works. But it's not as dense as lead, so that means you have to have a much larger keel in order to make up for it. So I'm starting to rethink this, and I'm thinking maybe a combination, maybe some steel plate to make a box. Whatever lead I could find could be poured into that inside it that would become a mold but also it's a, it becomes a composite outside ballast keel that might work so I still have a few things to research and think about I might redraw the lines to represent maybe a smaller boat this is all part of the design process especially when you're designing yourself and you're able to do this you have to look at all the different possibilities cost is a big issue because I'm doing this, I'm retired, retirement income, very limited. I'm using a lot of reclaimed materials. If I could find enough lead, you know, for free, people will give me, then that would be wonderful, but it's not so easy anymore. So I do have to rethink this. So maybe the smaller boat is the way to go. I really like the Phil Bolger blueberry design. That might be a little bit too small, have to be slightly larger, at least a little fuller in the beam. A little more displacement, I think. Otherwise, I really like the looks of it. I do like the lines. So I might start going in that direction. I just got that whole thing in my head about the documented vessel, and that's why I went up to 26 feet. You're going to see this progress. Uh, every week I hope to have something to add, something to update, and I want to explain to you how some of my decisions come about. It will happen. Once I get all these details worked out, I'll start working on construction drawings, then I can start laying out the keel. I've done this plenty of times before in the past. It's not my first rodeo. It's a limited budget, and so it's as I can scrounge and find materials and put it all together. I think one of the biggest expenses is going to be epoxy. Fifteen years ago, when I sold my property on Cape Cod and gave up my wooden boat shop and moved up to Maine, Epoxy was, uh, oh, maybe less than a third of what it costs today. Talk about sticker shock when I started shopping. So that will be a big out-of-pocket expense, but most everything else I pretty much have. Uh, we'll have to buy some fiberglass cloth. I have some in, in inventory, but not nearly enough. I'm going to end it here. Just wanted to have a look at what I began doing, starting out doing some line. There'll be some giveaways coming up soon, so you want to make sure you're a subscriber.